I was in Target the other day and I came across this awesome lamp. It's a glass jar at the bottom that unscrews from a lid at the top, and I thought I could turn this into a terrarium. Luckily the lamp part is completely separate from the jar, but I'll still have to make a few modifications as well as a custom background. I've made a few little terrariums in the past, but nothing quite like this. The first thing I need to address is lighting. You see there's a small bolt sticking out at the bottom of this, and I want to put in this submersible LED light. Unfortunately, it's a bit too big to fit on the sides, so I'm going to have to modify the lid a bit. I could just use the light of the lamp to light the terrarium, but it won't be on all the time and the plants need light to grow. Anyway, the first thing I did was remove the bolt from the bottom of the lamp. It was on there pretty tight, so it took a bit of strength to get it off. Once everything was unscrewed, I separated both of the pieces. With the pieces separated, I need to cut the top lamp piece. My plan is to shorten this piece so that I can attach the LED at the top of the lamp without it sticking out too much. Anyway, with the piece cut, I went back and reassembled everything. You can see that it's a lot shorter now, which will make the LED almost flush with the lid. Also, I tightened everything back up with pliers. Now you can see the light fits much better and won't stick out a lot. Now I need to attach it permanently with super glue. These lights are battery powered, so I had to make sure that I could access the batteries. All you have to do is unscrew the light, replace the batteries, then screw it back on. It's kind of annoying because the batteries don't last too long, just a few days, but unfortunately I couldn't find a better lighting option. Uh, maybe I'll go back in the future and find something better, but for now, this will do. Anyway, I need to make the background. I'll be using a pretty interesting technique for this one, starting with some aqua soil. I'll then pour it into a container and mix it with water. The combination of these two ingredients will allow me to make a sort of clay that will be used to hold rocks. I've never used this technique before, so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, after pouring all the water in, I started to mix it up with my hands. This was a pretty messy and time consuming project. I had to keep going back and draining some of the water, then adding some more, and then draining it again. Once everything was mixed up, I could start to add it to the terrarium along with a few pieces of Serio stone. This stone will contrast really well with the moss and spider wood that I'll add later. Anyway, now it's time to make the background. I started by placing in a stone, then surrounding it with aqua soil. The aqua soil will hold the stones together and create a growing medium for moss. I then repeated this process to create the rest of the background. The aqua soil was a bit wet at first, but eventually it dried up. Like I said, I've never used any technique like this before, but I figured I'd try something new. I didn't have to make a background for this, but I figured it might look better if I did. I could have carved a background out of foam like I usually do, or used spray foam, but that would have been extremely hard to do in such a small space. Not to mention the glass is curved, so carving a piece of foam would have been even harder. This technique, however, works perfectly for small spaces. Anyway, I continued to add small stones and hold them in place with the aqua soil. This background technique worked extremely well, and I'll definitely be using it in the future. Anyway, with the background finished, it's time to make the false bottom. I'll be using black sand for lack of better material. As with any other terrarium or enclosure, the false bottom is a key element. Water will pool here instead of in the substrate. Once the sand was in, I covered it in a layer of mesh to separate it from the substrate. It was a bit of a process to get the mesh in here because of the background, but eventually I got it. Anyway, with the mesh in place, it's time to add the charcoal layer. This will help absorb any sitting water and prevent odor and bacteria buildup. After I put the charcoal layer in, I started to add the substrate. This is just a standard ABG mix composed of sphagnum moss, cocoa fiber, reptile bark, and sand. You'll also see that I sloped it up towards the back to create depth. You can buy ABG mixes, but as with most things, I find if you make your own, it's a lot cheaper and you get more. 
Anyway, with the substrate in, it's time to add the moss. Like I mentioned earlier, the aqua soil will be a good growing medium for moss, so that's where I'll start. When adding the moss to the background, I made sure not to cover too much of the rocks and make sure to cover all the aqua soil. I've actually been meaning to propagate some moss, so let me know down in the comments if that's a video you'd be interested in. After the background was covered, I started adding moss to the bottom. I also added a few more pieces of Serious stone to help everything blend better. Once the ground was covered with moss, I added a few smaller pieces of Serious stone to soften things up a bit. Now it's time to add the wood. I'm using a few pieces of spider wood that I had left over from the raining paludarium. I also added a few more patches of moss where I felt they were necessary. Once all the wood was in, I added a few small pieces of ivy. The last thing to do is add the cleanup crew. I have a few powder blue isopods, as well as some springtails. It's really hard to see them on camera here, but I assure you they're there. Once the terrarium was finished, I screwed on the lid, added the lampshade, and that completed the project. And there you have it, the DIY lamp terrarium. I really love the way this looks, and it felt good to finally work on a terrarium again. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I've done a few in the past, but nothing quite like this. Mostly I just used materials from my backyard, instead of the stuff that I used in this one. Also I think the background technique worked really well, and I'll definitely use it again in the future. Let me know what you think. I really enjoyed working on this one, so let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more terrarium videos. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching.